Hi, thanks a lot. Um, I'm Jose Gomez Marquez. I lead the uh, Little Devices Lab at MIT and, and a couple of uh, DIY medical technology initiatives at the Institute, um, uh, including uh, something uh, that was launched here last year called Maker Nurse um, and some of our global labs aimed at um, developing world technologies. Um, but I want to have everybody else introduce themselves. So my, my name is Richard Tsai. Hello, my name is Victor Tsai. I'm one of the nurses at my Maimonides uh, Cancer Center. Uh, my name is Mark Belanger. I'm a technical instructor at MIT uh, at the Edgerton Center. Uh, my name is Aaron Michon. I'm the executive director of the Rita and Alex Hillman Foundation. Uh, our institutional mission is to improve the lives of patients and their families through uh, nursing-driven innovation. Thanks. So, so one of the things that we wanted to to cover today is, is talk a little bit about what um, this concept of, 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 of making health, how do you combine these two communities that until people like us and other troublemakers came along, they'd been told, you know, you'll shoot your eye out. You could do it, you can do IoT of Cal, you could do um, 3D print castles and drones, but please just stay away from, from healthcare. Um, and we, we, you know, a few years ago, we started to challenge that notion, looking not only at the, at the, at the writing capacity of things that everybody's here talked about, as accessible prototyping, uh, building communities of practice, and that sort of thing, um, but also looking back at the history of, of medical technology and healthcare in general, and how uh, we began by creating tools that um, were not developed at a large company or a fac or, 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 or a skunk works engineering group um, or, or even in, a, in just an academic setting. A lot of the, a lot of the uh, tools and the technologies that we use today, um, whether it's balloon angioplasty, whether it's wearable pacemakers, um, whether it's even the placebo effect, were all developed by basically an amateur or an engineer of one that had a garage. Um, it was not developed by what we now see as this um, medical industrial de uh, design complex of, 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 bio of bioengineering, basically, or biomedical engineering. And so what we've done in the last few years in the lab, uh, we started to do a lot of this stuff in, in, um, in, in developing countries, but then we really brought back some of those learnings of how do you empower communities whose you know, whether it's international aid agencies that have given up on R&D for, for medicine in these communities, or whether it's uh, local capacity that will really take 20 years to traditionally mature, um, and t technology transfer um, policies that completely failed. 90% uh, of the technologies that we sent to the developing world from, from a medical point of view are donated, and, si and in six months they fail. Um, it's, it's just a WHO stat. So what we found is that people there don't take it standing down. They, they, they get up and they make their own stuff, just like we were doing 50 years ago and what got us companies like Medtronic and Cook Medical and, 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 and Balloon Angioplasty and other fields. And, 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 and while this is a global phenomenon, we wanted to bring it back to the states and look at what, where does DIY medical technology live today? Where does just the notion of moving from being a part, you know, the, if, if you go to enough conferences like we do in medicine sometimes, the, 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 the current buzzword is participatory medicine. And one of the things that we've wanted to do, and we're, we're moving with your help and, and, and with folks like what, what we have today, is moving from um, participatory medicine or, or this notion that if you're an active patient or caregiver, you're really an advocate for your rights and you're an advocate for your treatment and moving from advocacy into being part of that design process and being a maker in health. Um, and, and that covers a lot of different um, uh, you know, applications, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But, but um, beyond the stuff that we do in the lab, and this is our practice, I, I thought that the best examples that I could show that were real world examples are people actually living it. And, and for that, I wanted to first introduce um, uh, Mark, Mark Belanger. Um, Mark, you want to introduce yourself and tell your story? Sure. I'll give you the clicker. Oh. <laughs> 
So um, 10 years ago, um, my daughter was born medically challenged, and uh, she required continuous feeds uh, 23 hours a day. So one of the problems that um, we as caregivers and parents experience is something called a wet bed. And that's when the uh, feeding tube opens up in the middle of the night, and that person hasn't received the necessary uh, nutrition that you were counting on. So um, having a shop to work in and uh, the means of rapid prototyping, uh, I was able to go through the prototyping process and develop a product that encased the feeding tube and protect it from disconnections and uh, unexpected uh, opening. Um, more here. So uh, you can see uh, the fail is when you're relying on a continuous feed or medication throughout the evening and you wake up in the morning only to discover that um, you have fed the bed. So uh, through many attempts, uh, one of them being uh, tape and Velcro, um, they, uh, none of these were working uh, in a way that, that um, we wanted. So. Uh, I came up with an idea of what if I could just wrap this thing in an Easter egg. And so uh, that's, what I, that's how I started my project. Uh, the nurses saw it and said, you're on to something here. Uh, continue and, and develop this because there's nothing out there like this. So um, through the ability of, of having a shop to work in, uh, I was able to prototype my product and uh, bring it to market. and. Um, these are the prototyping stages here, and uh, I developed a product called the Cori Safe. So, Mark, I should I should preface every. Mark showed me how to 3D print six <laughs> years ago. So um, when I called him last week and I said, "Hey, do you want to come to Maker Fair?" I was like, "What are you getting me into now?" Um, we also had the first 3D printer accident when I used that, that machine. Um, and, and when we were looking for, for different people that, that had followed this trajectory, Mark's one of the few people that I knew that actually not only made something for that patient, um, but really, um, I mean, you're not just making these for Corey, you're, you're, you're shipping these around the world now. Yeah, so I like to think that we have a community of caregivers and parents that, um, that really rely on this and um, get compliments uh, and letters and uh, recommendations daily. Um, it's, it's been very fulfilling for me. Um, in my shop, I have sent things, I've, I've worked on projects that have been sent to the space station. I've worked on uh, projects that have gone to the depths uh, of the oceans, but this to me, this, this hit home for me. Um, and it was just, uh, you know, it was just, it was there uh, waiting to happen. And I think that every day uh, problems present themselves in a caregiver's uh, setting. And there's numerous, numerous challenges out there that, that we as makers, um, there's, a, there's opportunity galore. Thank you. Um, Victor, tell us, you, you come from a, you actually wear two different hats um, in your case. I don't know if that's working, so we'll switch. But, but, but you wear two different hats. One is a caregiver and one is a healthcare provider. Um, tell us that trajectory and, and, and where you mash up health and making and, and, and what that opportunity meant for you. Hi, so uh, my name is Victor Tai again. I'm uh, one of the nurses at the Cancer Center in Brooklyn. Uh, I'm also a father of a 15-year-old child with autism. So um, I spent 20 years of my life in the fashion, fashion industry. So just to give a, a really uh, background about my life. And um, about four years ago, I went back to school for nursing because I found uh, that there's, there are a lot of deficits in between taking care of children with development, development, developmental needs. Um, a year and a half ago, um, a patient came in into our clinic who was nonverbal and had, um, had needed radiation therapy. Um, the, the, the child had autism as well, uh, and I had a challenge of teaching this child um, what the, he needs to do during the treatment. So um, I've, 
you know, I've, what do you want to keep in mind? Yeah. Sorry. So I formulated a way to kind of recreate a model of the machine that's going to give him the radiation. Uh, this is a linear accelerator that's being used for radiation therapy. And I recreated uh, the model of the LINAC to be able to, uh, to teach him uh, what, ha what he needs to expect when the machine whirs or when the gantry turns around and when the couch or the treatment table um, in the moves. And, and this was a really great experience because the kid um, did whatever he was told. He had this full treatment. Um, he had his therapy. Um, and um, to top this off, now this machine, this model, this LIGO model uh, is actually being used in two different cancer centers. Uh, I'm married to another radiation oncologist at NYU Medical Center, and she's also being she's also using this at the same at, at the at that cancer center. I was, I was asking you before, like, did you learn Lego doing this, or had you been doing this for a long time? Lego in, in in general for a long time. So I've been a Lego builder for about 40 years. Um, I probably have about half a million Lego bricks at home. Um, and this, this actually, this, this machine comes from several different uh, Lego sets. The, gan the, the collimator, which is on top of that gantry, is actually a, is a Saturn V rocket capsule. Um, and uh, the, you know, the, um, the treatment table moves up and down using arms from, um, actually, if you, if you have ever bought Star Wars sets, that's the arms of the little Roger Roger uh, clone uh, you know, robot, robots. So it's a bunch of different parts from different LEGO sets that are put together to recreate the model. You know, I, I find this fascinating. You know, in the lab, what we, a lot of what we, we, we kind of preach when we, when we t talk to our students and we go to the field is this notion of supply chain arbitrage. It's hacking the things that you have around you because some of them have better supply chains than others. And, and obviously, toys for us have always been a big inspiration because it's a lot easier to find a rack and pinion gear from a toy than it is to order one in Mac, from a McMaster car, even if you're in the United States in certain parts of America. But but you could find one in places like Nicaragua or or or, or Vermont. And, and and but one of the things that both you, of your examples and 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 uh, and, and, and I'll, I'll introduce Arn for a second is they both appeal to a segment of healthcare that um, to this day still remains overlooked and it's one of the most I think it, it, it um, just really uh, you know it, unbearable uh, and painful sections of, 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 of our healthcare population which are these long tail patients um, you know if you look at the types of conditions or the type of populations that 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 people like Corey and other people belong to um, they're not gonna make a 20 billion market for you know, oncology uh, uh, interpretation and that sort of thing, but making can address that diffu you know can it can diffuse those solutions a lot better. Arun what do you, you work a lot with nurses and, and, you're in, and, and when we met that's that's the um, that's the overlap that we came across is how do you see these types of activities have an effect in in the way patients are treated? Well. I'm interested in this uh, notion of trying to harness uh, the unique vantage point that nurses bring to healthcare. They're in this remarkable position of working at the critical nexus of a vast and mystifying healthcare system. Um, and the intimate details of the lives of the, of the people that they serve. It allows them to kind of identify needs in a way that other healthcare practitioners are unable to do. Um, they have this remarkable perspective, and yet all of that knowledge is, is deeply underutilized. And I, I think certainly hearing your story, um, an extension of that is the degree to which um, caregiver knowledge is underutilized in designing uh, better healthcare devices, better healthcare experiences. So. One of the things that I spend a, a lot of time thinking about is how do we, how do we create um, more maker nurses? Um, how do we um, harness that power so that patients ultimately um, can benefit from that? I think that and is that something that is only going to come from the nursing community, or is the maker community, you know, how can they play? together better like what 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 role do you see the maker community come in and say we we have technologies we have skills how, how do we 
how do we work together to empower these types of, of, of inquiries that you're talking about? I, I think it's tough in some ways. I think that in certain settings like major academic medical centers, those cultures are incredibly rigid. So I think in some ways nurses have been very successful in circumventing those mainstream systems. And I think that that's also power of a community that has sometimes some sub, subversive kind of power mm -hmm. and identity. Um, so I, I think that developing those communities and, and establishing sandboxes, playgrounds, maker spaces for like-minded nurses in institutions that are open uh, to these new ideas is critical in beginning that conversation. Um, I also think that nurses are the stepping stone to creating networks of maker communities amongst patients and family caregivers. And I think that that's going to be critically important to um, delivering quality health care. That's, that's great. How many of you know nurses here or patients? But, but how many of you know nurses? Like, one of the things that I would, I would encourage you to do is talk to them to, tomorrow if you see them or, or reach out to them and say, um, when was the last time you made something for me? And you'll get a really interesting, not only an interesting story of compassion and all the other stuff, but if you look through the right lens, um, I think you're going to find that all of us and a lot of people, you, th th there's, there's enough hardware opportunities there. Um, you know, again, it, we, were, we were talking in the other session about the internet of farms. And what about the internet of patient? Uh, I want to know how my grandmother is doing without having to install a $5,000 telemetry system. Uh, and we shouldn't live in a world where, you know, we're only developing $300 smart pill bottles. When we all know in this room it takes about $20 in, in electronics to make that happen. Um, but, if, but, if, but if we can create communities of practice so that we're not just the only game in town, but we, you know, we've come to Maker Faire, we come to other places and, and really you know, share 100 health hacks next year, I, I, I think you'll find that next, next, next year at MakerCon, if they, if they have us back, you'll, you know, we'll have maybe three times as many um, marks and victors uh, to, to, that, that, are, that are playing. So, you know, any last words I from anybody? I would just say I, that my, my hunch, too, is that those, uh, the community hasn't kind of coalesced. Right. But the makers are out there. Um, and it's a question of, and I think you've been doing a lot of this work, of identifying people who are actively making, creating design, people who are active in making that transition from a consumer of healthcare to a creator of healthcare, mm -hmm. um, and and so I think that those, <laughs> I think that those communities are, are at a critical stage where we'll start to see them uh, more readily identified. Okay, so thank you all. I think we're pretty much out of time. If we have any questions, we'll take them outside. Um, but uh, you know, health is a, is a big deal. We spend a lot of money in health. Everybody that we know has something that 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 has health in common. So. Get involved. It, it's it's a it's a big, wide open space, um, and and we're eager to to collaborate and give you ideas. Thanks a lot, everybody. That Thank you. Great. Thank you.